Lesson one of the anatomy and physiology side of the A-level uh, PE course is on the cardiovascular system. Anytime we hear the word cardio, it relates to the heart. And anytime we hear the word vascular, it relates to blood vessels such as the veins, arteries, or capillaries. Having a greater understanding of what these words actually mean is going to give you a significant advantage when it comes to answering questions because you'll already have a little bit of a hint as to what that structure in the body does. For example, I accidentally put a picture of the lungs when first constructing this presentation. Uh, for some reason, I thought vascular related to the lungs, but actually the word pulmonary relates to the lungs. That's going to be important when we talk about the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins uh, later on in this lesson. But for now, the uh, key objectives for uh, this lesson are going to be that we can recall the four chambers of the heart, which are the ventricles and the atria, and that we're able to label these on a diagram. Our silver objective is to recall the characteristics of veins. Again, this is gonna help us when it comes to achieving our gold objective of understanding or being able to describe the passage of a red blood cell through the structures of the heart. And rather than just simply memorizing these structures, we're gonna understand what these structures actually do and uh, their function, which is going to help us remember it more. Anytime you see the challenge icon on one of the slides, it's not necessarily related to a question that might come up in the exam, but it is going to challenge your understanding of uh, your knowledge and it's going to unlock deeper thinking. The support icons are just basic hints and the stretch icon is just building on previous knowledge and uh, layering that up. So the bronze objective to recall the basic structure of the heart. Now, when I look at this awful <laughs> diagram or model of the heart all I can see is a face but we're going to unpack that a little bit more so the easiest thing to do when it comes to either labeling the heart or understanding the passage of blood flow is to first identify where the ventricles are now these are the easiest starting point in my opinion because it kind of looks like you could slot a v in uh, the place of them so we've got the left ventricle which weirdly enough is actually on the right hand side and the right ventricle which is on the left hand side and the reason for this is because when you get diagrams of the heart usually it's almost as if we're looking at somebody's heart so what would be our right side is actually their left side of the heart another giveaway is that the left ventricle of the heart is the thickest of the four chambers the reason why this is the case is because whilst the right ventricle has got to pump blood to the lungs, which is still a relatively far distance, the left ventricle in comparison has to pump blood around the entire body. Now, one of the adaptations to training for elite athletes is that their left ventricle wall or the muscle of this left ventricle wall becomes thicker because it's able to pump more oxygenated blood uh, to the body. So in terms of the sizing, the ventricles are bigger than the chambers that sit on top of them, which are the atria. And of the two ventricles, the left ventricle is the one that's the thickest because this is pumping the furthest distance. In comparison, the atria only have to pump blood into the ventricles. So they're not quite pumping uh, as far. Also, if you're wondering why the atria are uh, smaller, it's because, as I said, they're pumping blood into the ventricles. So it's kind of like they're more of a passageway, whereas the ventricles are like a uh, pump. And the atria are the second easiest uh, structure to identify when it comes to labeling the heart, since the A sits on top of the V. This is the way I like to re remember it. So now we know how to distinguish between the atria and the ventricles. The final point I want to make is that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing thinking of the different names of the same structures. 
The atria is the plural version of the word atrium. So if we're talking about the left and uh, right atriums together, we're going to call them just the atria. But if we're talking about them individually, so for example, just the left one, we would say left atrium. Or if we're talking about just the right one, we would say uh, right atrium. So now that we know how to identify uh, the atria uh, and the ventricles, we should be able to do the question on the next slide. The first thing we need to do is identify the ventricles, which is the easiest thing to do, because they kind of look like these are already in them. So you should have already worked out that D and B are the ventricles, and you should have also worked out that A and E, since they're the chambers sitting on top of the ventricles, are the uh, atriums, or if we're using the plural word, the uh, atria. But what's this little bit in the middle? So this is known as a septum. Now the easy way I like to remember this is that the septum separates. So you have, for example, a septum that separates your uh, nostrils, and I'm sure there's other septums uh, in the body that I'm uh, not aware of. But this middle bit is called the septum, and it just makes sure that the uh, blood flow is uh, separate. Now, Fabrice Mwamba might have been a little bit before your time, but you'll probably remember when Christian Eriksen collapsed in a game during the European Championships. Fabrice Mwamba had a heart condition known as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Now, if we break down that word a little bit, uh, cardio obviously uh, relates to the heart. Hypertrophic or hypertrophy relates to uh, an increase in muscle size. If people are going to the gym and saying they're training for hypertrophy, they are training for the purpose of making their uh, muscles bigger. So the word hypertrophy or hypertrophic means to increase in muscular size. Obstructive, if you obstruct someone, you're preventing or blocking them from doing a certain thing. Cardio, myopathy, so cardio, we already know that relates to the heart. The word myo relates to muscle. So if we break that word down a little bit, we should be able to work out that something is going on in his heart where the muscle is too big and it's blocking something. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about what that is in this slide. So if you look at these two hearts, I want you to try and work out which one of these belongs to Fabrice Mwamba, who was an elite athlete. Uh, and who actually uh, was pronounced dead for 72 minutes in a uh, fixture for Bolton Wanderers against uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Look at these two hearts. I want you to try and work out which one of the hearts belongs to Fabrice Mwamba and which one is a normal sized heart. Remember that when one of the uh, adaptations to uh, endurance training is a thickening of the left ventricle wall. Remember, this is the structure of the heart that helps pump uh, blood around the body. So the better trained you are as an athlete, the thicker this uh, left ventricle is going to be. And myocardium is the muscle layer of that heart. So how do we know which one of these hearts belongs to Fabrice Mwamba and which one belongs to a normal person? Well, well done if you worked out that the one on the right is the one that uh, belongs to Fabrice Mwamba. If you look closely, the left wall of the heart, or what appears to be the right wall as you're looking at it, is thicker. Now, I want you to think about why Fabrice Mwamba's condition might have been harder to detect compared to if he was, say, just an ordinary person of lesser fitness. Now, if you're paying attention, you should be thinking something along the lines of that because he's an elite athlete, his left ventricle wall is going to be thicker because of a byproduct of the training that he's doing. But in Fabrice Mwamba's case, that heart wall was so thick, it was basically obstructing the passage of blood through his heart. And this is what left him to collapse and basically saw him pronounced dead for 72 minutes. Thankfully, he was resuscitated and survived. But just by understanding the basic structure of the heart and basic, uh, not so basic, uh, meanings of these words, we can still work our way around or get our head around this challenge question, even if we'd never heard of this heart condition before. In future lessons, we're going to go uh, over um, tachycardia, which was the condition that Christian Eriksen's heart went into when he collapsed in the European Championships. So now we're going to talk about our gold objective, which is to describe the passage of a red blood cell going through the heart.
Now, whilst it could be easy to just try and remember the order of these structures, it is definitely easier when you know the function and uh, the characteristics of these structures. So, for example, you might not remember that the vena cava delivers deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. But if you know that the vena cava is a vein, then you can start to build a, a picture about what characteristics uh, it might have. For example, if uh, we remember back to GCC content, arteries take blood away. So A, away. Arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins take blood uh, towards the heart. Veins tend to be larger blood vessels and they carry deoxygenated blood back uh, towards the heart. So because they're already uh, taking blood back towards the heart, they tend to be under uh, lower pressure. Whereas arteries, the blood has just left the heart. The heart is a muscular pump, so it's already put this blood under pressure. The next characteristic of uh, veins that arteries don't have is uh, valves. The reason why veins have valves the same way that, for example, you might have um, valves on certain water works is to make sure the blood only flows in the right direction. Uh, and that direction is towards the heart. So I want you to have a think about why arteries don't have valves, but veins do. So that reason is to do with the direction of blood flow that's going through an artery. So we should remember A, away, blood going through the arteries goes away from the heart. So the reason why arteries don't require valves is because the pressure from the heart is so strong that the blood is only physically able to flow in one direction. We'll learn a little bit more about valves uh, in later content, uh, but for now, we're gonna talk about the next characteristics of veins, which is that wider lumen. This wider lumen is basically the uh, size of the tube, uh, if you will. So blood from the arteries is usually under higher pressure. This is because the muscular pump of the heart, or more specifically the left ventricle, has just uh, contracted. It's put that blood under pressure and it needs to be under that higher amount of pressure because it's taking blood away from the heart around the, whole, the entire body. So since the blood in the arteries is already under uh, an immense amount of pressure, this pressure is what is going to allow the uh, blood to be pumped around the body. However, in veins, because it's returning to the heart, it's under less pressure because it's uh, gone on a longer journey, if you will. This wider lumen size is what's going to allow more blood uh, to flow through it. But what does the vena cava do? It delivers deoxygenated blood back to the right atrium of the heart. Now we know that this is what the vena cava does, and we know it's a vein. We know the first two steps that a uh, red blood cell is going to take in the heart. So we know it goes through the vena cava and it goes into the right atrium of the heart. And if we remember earlier how we identify the ventricles and that the, uh, atri uh, the atria sit on top of the ventricles, we already know the first two steps that a red blood cell takes. So we identify the uh, ventricles by, it looks like the letter V, and the atria sit on top of that. Uh, it's probably a little bit of a stretch to say that they look like the letter A, but it is an easy way of remembering that the ventricles sit beneath the uh, atrium. Now, the next thing you might have noticed on this diagram is a uh, valve. Now, this valve is one of four valves, uh, but for the sake of A-level, you only need to know about two. And those two are the tricuspid and bicuspid valve. If you can't remember which one comes first when we're talking about the passage of a red blood cell in the body, I like to remember that you try before you buy. So the tricuspid valve comes before the bicuspid valve. So we've got a tricuspid valve. I'll explain. So that's between the uh, vena cava, uh, sorry, between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And you've got the bicuspid valve, which is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. But we'll go over that a little bit more detail later on. So, uh, as I said, try before you buy is an easy way of remembering that the tricuspid valve comes before the bicuspid valve. Now, we already know from uh, labelling the ventricles and the atrium that if it's gone through the atrium and it's gone through the tricuspid valve, the next thing that it's going to go into is the uh, right ventricle. Now, the right ventricle will eventually uh, end up helping pump blood to the lungs 
whilst the uh, left ventricle will pump blood to the body. So with this in mind, which two of the ventricles uh, should be larger? If you're paying attention again, you should know it's the left ventricle, just because the left ventricle is pumping around the entire body, whereas the right ventricle is only pumping uh, towards the lungs. But that's going to help us in understanding uh, where the blood is going next after the right ventricle. Remember we said that the word, uh, anytime we're talking about lungs, we're, or anytime we see the word pulmonary, it's relating uh, to the lungs. Again, I like to think of the atria as more of a passageway. They're just basically allowing blood to flow through into the ventricles, and the ventricles are a bit more like a pump. This is why the ventricles are bigger than the uh, atria. Now, if we know that the word uh, pulmonary relates to uh, the lungs, and we know that the vena cava takes deoxygenated blood uh, through to the right atrium, we know that that blood has got to get oxygenated at some point. In order for our, our muscles to use oxygen, the deoxygenated blood that's come into the heart needs to get uh, to the ox uh, needs to get to the lungs to become uh, oxygenated. Now, I remember years ago. Uh, as a young child, a family friend of my mum's tricked me into thinking that Scottish people bleed blue blood. With these diagrams, you'd be forgiven for thinking uh, the same, but that's just to represent the deoxygenated blood coming in through the vena cava, and eventually, when the blood comes back into the heart, it's already been to the lungs, and it's therefore been oxygenated. So for the purposes of this diagram, that's why some of the diagram is blue, and some of the diagram is red. But if we know that pulmonary means uh, relating to the lungs, and we know that uh, the right uh, ventricle is going to pump blood to the lungs before it gets, before it, the artery that's going to take it there is the pulmonary artery. Now you don't need to know this A-level content, but the second valve that you can see represented by number five is the uh, pulmonary uh, valve. So we're going to go through the right ventricle via the pulmonary valve to the pulmonary artery, and that's going to take the deoxygenated blood uh, to the lungs. Now, if a pulmonary uh, artery takes blood away, remember, artery away, what kind of structure is going to bring it back? Remember, we need a word relating to the lungs, and we need the type of blood vessel that brings blood towards the heart. So if you're following me, then you'll know that this is going to be the pulmonary vein. Now, in more complicated diagrams, you might have a right side of the pulmonary vein and a left side of the pulmonary vein. Um, and the pulmonary vein, again, pulmonary relates to the word lungs. So anytime we're talking about the lungs, there's going to be something to do with oxygen involved. The pulmonary vein delivers oxygenated blood to the left uh, atrium. And we know that we have to try before we buy. So it's going to come through the bicuspid valve. This is also sometimes known as the mitral valve or the mitral valve, but you won't, you hear it called that when it comes to A-level content. So you've got your tricuspid valve, which is between the right atrium and the right ventricle, and you've got the bicuspid valve, which is between the left atrium and the left ventricle, represented by uh, number nine in this uh, diagram. So we should all we easily be able to identify number 10, because that is the structure that the V slots nicely into, and that is our left ventricle. This left ventricle will eventually help blood pump around the entire body. And uh, you'll also notice that weirdly on this diagram, the left side is actually the left side. Normally a telltale sign is which wall is, uh, sorry, the, uh, on this diagram, and I'm not really a fan of this diagram, I'm not entirely sure why I've chosen it. But on this diagram, for some reason, the uh, right ventricle is uh, bigger than the uh, left ventricle as you're looking at it. So I'm not really a fan of this diagram because it can be a little bit uh, confusing. And finally, the so if the vena cava is the largest vein of the body, which is also useful in, uh, um, in understanding why it's the main vein to bring deoxygenated blood uh, into the heart, then understanding that the aorta is the largest artery uh, makes a lot of sense even when we look at more complex diagrams. So the aorta is your biggest artery and the reason for this is it has one of the biggest jobs. It helps blood travel the furthest distance. So they, the aorta takes blood to the rest of the body uh, via the aortic valve.
So even if we get a really complex looking diagram, which you won't get one like this, but you should still be able to identify the vena cava because it's the largest vein in the body. And you should also be able to identify the aorta because it's the uh, largest uh, artery in the body. So at this point, you should be able to answer all of these uh, questions below. I'm going to timestamp in the description where the answers uh, to these uh, questions are. And in the next lesson, we're going to be going over the uh, cardiac conduction system. We'll have a quick recap of the passage of blood through the basic structures of the heart. And then we're going to get on to how electrical impulses help generate the heartbeat.